Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to learn how to make tinctures from medicinal roots. So yesterday afternoon, my husband and I harvested lots of medicinal plants off the property. And we filmed a video on that one too, so if you haven't checked that one out, I'll post a link here. It's probably a good idea that you watch that one first because it's going to show you how to identify roots, how to harvest them properly, um, and, and all that jazz. So definitely take a look at that one. When we were done harvesting the roots, we did the vast majority of washing the roots outside. And I do strongly suggest this because it's really, really dirty work and there's a lot of dirt and soil and you don't want that going down your drain, um, especially if you're on septic like us. Uh, so what we did is we filled a nice big tote with water from the rain barrel and we scrubbed the roots as much as we could. Then this morning, I finished off washing them, washing them in the kitchen. And one of my favorite tools for washing roots is actually this little brush that you can get from Ikea. So I strongly recommend you get these because they're really, really great for scrubbing things like carrots, parsnips, beets, and medicinal roots. So once you have all of your roots washed, you want to make sure that they're really, really dry next because when I make tinctures, I have pretty specific ratios in terms of how much weight and too much water content on your roots is going to mess up those measurements. The next step you're going to want to do is to remove any parts of the roots that maybe were gnawed on by animals, got a little rotten, or areas where you couldn't get the dirt out. So you wanna do this first and just slice away and get rid of any parts of the roots that are unusable. That actually looks okay. So even this here, this to me is not damage to the root. This is simply just the way the root grew. So I don't feel the need to cut that away. You're looking for kind of slimy pieces, areas that are a little black, you know, that just look rotten and pieces that you don't want to have in your medicine. So I'm gonna work my way through these now and I'll come back in just a moment and show you how we chop them and process them for tincture making. So I have a little friend who wanted to join me in the videos, yeah? So what you're going to need for your tincture making are some pretty basic supplies. You're going to want a decent quality knife. I actually prefer using a Mezzaluna. It is well worth the investment if you can find one of these at a kitchen shop, online. Um, it's my absolute favorite and once I start chopping up the roots you'll see why. And just as a tip, don't get the double bladed ones. Um, things get gunked up in between there and they are actually more trouble than they're worth. What else you're going to need? You're going to need jars of some kind. If you're using mason jars like me, you're also going to need a little bit of parchment paper just to act as a barrier between the lid and the jar. And you're going to need alcohol. Uh, I make my own menstruum from commercial alcohol, but the best and easiest one to source online is vodka. And optional but highly recommending is a kitchen scale. I bought this one probably a decade ago for $28, $29. It's well worth the investment. I think I've only changed the batteries a couple times. If you're going to get into medicine making, I really do think a kitchen scale is wise. However, not necessary. I'll show you how full the jars are once I'm done processing. So when I make 500 milliliters of tincture, I use 87 grams of herb material. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my scale with my bowl on the scale. This is going to zero it out, leaving um, starting at a measurement of zero. So it doesn't include the weight of the bowl. So I'm going to do that now. And before I start chopping, I want to get my 87 grams of roots. And what's really nice about roots is they're heavy. And so you don't actually need a lot of them to equal 87 grams. And the root that I, oh, was that 89? Let's see if I can get it down to, ah, I'll leave it at 89, but in and around 87 is where I want to be. So as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of root to make 500 milliliters of tincture. And this, the root that I'm working with right now is Althea officinalis, otherwise known as marshmallow root. We harvested this yesterday. And so when I was mentioning before, when you're cutting away pieces of your root, 
If you're working with marshmallow root, it's supposed to be slimy. That's not the slimy I'm talking about. I'm talking about rotten bits on your roots. Those are the parts you want to get um, to kind of move or take off, sorry, so they're not included in your medicine. But as you're chopping, if you notice your hands get a little slimy, that's because marshmallow root is really high in demulcency. So before I chop with my mezzaluna, I like to break my roots up into smaller, more manageable pieces. It just makes it a little easier. Like I said, roots are harder to work with than aerial parts. So it's going to take a little bit more elbow grease on your part. Like I said, just smaller, more manageable pieces. And then I start chopping. And I'm gonna work a little slower, cause like I said, these are hard, right? There we go. When you're working with fresh herbs like catnip or even oregano and thyme from your garden, one of these knives makes for really short work, especially if you have to do a lot of chopping. With roots, you have to work a little bit slower so you don't send things flying across the kitchen. But as they get into smaller, more manageable pieces, I'm able to really work the knife well. So again, this knife is called a mezzaluna, M-E-Z-A. L-U-N-A. And you want to work fairly quickly and efficiently because as you start to chop your roots, they are now exposed to a larger amount of oxygen and they're oxidizing. And this does reduce the potency of our medicine. So this is not a great time to answer a phone call, check your phone, you know, watch a, a YouTube video. You really want to make sure that you're focused and uh, really attentive to your work. But at the same time, you also want to cut your roots fairly fine, ensuring that they are exposed, that there's more surface area, sorry, exposed to the alcohol. All right, so this is looking pretty good to me. I might go in with the other knife and just chop up any of the larger pieces. But I want to show you guys what 87 grams looks like in a jar, just in case you don't have a kitchen scale to work with. All right, one last go through. All right, wonderful. Did I lose some root? Oh, perfect, thank you. <laughs> my husband's prop guy now too. Forgot my wide mouth funnel. Oh, and one tiny little piece fell on the ground there. And if you wanna be extra diligent with your measurements and weighing, you can actually put your jar with your funnel back on here too, just to ensure that what you chopped is that 87 grams. I can feel the demulcency of the roots as I'm working with them. Marshmallow is an amazing plant ally that I definitely recommend you get to know. And see, so yeah, I lost some. Yeah, that's good. Is it good? Oh, wicked. Awesome. So I've got 87 grams here. And as you can see with roots, like if you've made tinctures from aerial parts, so your leaves and your flowers, you know that your jar is usually pretty full, but with roots, because they're so much denser, you're probably gonna fill about halfway. And these are for fresh roots, for dried roots, I'd say you fill about a third of the way. When you're working with fresh plant material, you always want to use more than you would if you were working with dried herbs, and that's because we're compensating for the water content that the fresh herbs have. So then the next step is to use your alcohol of choice. Like I said, if you don't have access to um, high proof alcohol, you can just use vodka. And I wanna fill all the way, all the way to the top. And remember that piece of parchment paper I was telling you about? You're gonna put that on as a barrier between your lid and the alcohol. 
And this is because alcohol will absolutely corrode the lid and then you have all that gunk inside your medicine which you don't want. You want to give it a good shake and then the next step would be to label your jar. My preference is actually to use painter's tape. Um, it's inexpensive, you can write on it, it you know, it's really easy to work with, plus it comes off really easily too, so you don't have to worry about scrubbing your jar for you know, 10 or 15 minutes just to get the old label off. And that's it. We just made a tincture from medicinal roots. So I've got all of my roots processed. I ended up with two liters of marshmallow root, Althea officinalis, and as you can see, I labeled them. So on your label, you want to make sure bare minimum that you have the herb name in there as well as the date in which you process them. You can add more information if you choose to. Some folks like to add, you know, where they harvested them from, that kind of thing. And then I ended up with two and a half liters of Inula Helenium, which is elecampane. And my husband asked a really great question. He wanted to know why I didn't just make my tinctures in one liter jars as opposed to doing 500 ml jars. And the reason for this is that tinctures can actually store for a really, really long time with the herbs still in them. So I actually have some tinctures that are upwards of 10 years old. And when I press a tincture, it's automatically exposed to oxygen, so it's gonna oxidize. And I'm opening it frequently because I'm using it in clinic. So ideally, I wanna keep it in a 500 ml jar and leave the rest just to sit there and macerate because they're gonna keep for longer. So hopefully that answers your question. In terms of storing, you want to keep your tinctures away from heat. So above your stove is not a great place. You want to keep them um, out of the light as much as possible in a cool, dark location. So I've actually got a closet that I have all of my tinctures in. Ideally, you want to shake them whenever you can think about it. You know, this helps to um, ensure that the alcohol is coming in contact with all the roots. So I'll go into my tincture cabinet and I'll just shake all the new ones, um, you know, whenever I think about it. You want them to sit for at least three months. They can sit, like I said, for a really, really long time. I don't press tinctures until I actually need them. And once you are ready to press them, you just want to strain the herb material out and the alcohol that's left behind is your tincture. For the rest of the roots, I chop them up and I put them in the dehydrator. So that's also a really great option too if you want to dry some for teas and broths and all types of other things um, later in the months you can use your dehydrator to dehydrate them. The one trick that I recommend or tip that I have is that you slice them fairly uniform. Um, that way they're all gonna dry at the same time. So if you have any questions or comments about making medicines from roots, please leave them below. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness.